Hi, greetings in Jesus name. Pointers along the way are brief Bible based messages I bring out, God willing, every Saturday dealing with practical aspects of the Christian life. I hope they will be a blessing to you. You can visit my website at www.c-n-c.org for my articles and books. This is pointer number 934 and its title is Where the Bible is Silent. When theologians say that the Bible is sufficient, they do not mean that it contains all the information we need. But it is sufficient when it comes to the revelation from God for our salvation. Another practical implication we need to be aware of is that the Bible has been written in such a way that we wish it had been more elaborate about many things. Scientific texts focus on precision and legal documents seek to cover all possibilities. But the Bible has not been written that way. It tells us important things clearly or in ways that can be surmised when we put the information from all the parts of the Bible together. But at the same time, we have to recognize and admit that there are many things on which it is silent or incomplete. When different Christians dispute with one another about the interpretation of certain passages, a common danger is that they start speculating about what is not clearly written. They begin to bring in their imaginations, which are influenced by which denomination they grew up in, which Bible college they were in, their own personal experience, etc. They may not even recognize the possibility of these diverse influences for different people and how each one perceives things. As a result, they find themselves unable to come to any consensus on many subjects and even part from one another and form new groups. Why can't we recognize the limits of what God has chosen to reveal to us and protect ourselves from being dogmatic about other matters? Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever, that we may observe all the words of this law. We can't help having our own opinions and feeling convinced about them from our side. But should we not also be convinced in our mind that there could be many things that we are not even aware of or that we may have our own biases or prejudices when we look at different things and then be cautious about asserting our views? Can't we hold some of these things in a tentative fashion instead of being adamant about them? At the same time, we must remember that spiritual things can only be understood by spiritually minded people. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. If we use our natural intellectual abilities and rely on our own experiences, we can end up far outside of the truth. Another warning Jesus gives us is that only those who are keen to obey in practice what God reveals to them can have their spiritual eyes opened by God to see spiritual truths. John chapter 7 verse 17 If anyone is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching whether it is of God or whether I speak from myself. A major problem that comes about during arguments is that in the process of presenting what we imagine to be the right interpretation of subjects, 
we may even negate what is clearly written in the Bible. People bring in obscure meanings of the Hebrew and Greek words or still more obscure references from ancient history, not realizing that using such things, they are actually trying to circumvent what is clearly revealed in Scripture. They forget one of the cardinal rules of biblical interpretation, that less clear words in the Bible must only be interpreted in line with words that are already clear. May the Lord bless you in your life as you have listened to these words. Thank you.